Hello and welcome to my second video on the introduction to cryptography. In this video we're going to be talking about the keyword cipher. So to our first video we had Alice and Bob. Now Alice and Bob are undercover agents and Alice wanted to send a message to Bob. In the last video she sent a message that said run. Now in this video uh, she was wrong, her cover wasn't blown, and she wants to send a message saying that everything's okay. So she takes out a sheet of paper and she writes her message down. Bob, I was wrong, my cover is fine, Alice. Now this is written in plain text because we can read it, but before she sends it, she encrypts it. And we call this the ciphertext. And it should be illegible so that anyone that gets it can't read it without the key. Now she's going to send this message off to Bob. But you always have to remember that your enemy can intercept the message and also read it. So now they both have a copy of the message, they both open it up, and they both see the illegible message. Now Bob, knowing the key, can decrypt it and get her message, Bob, I was wrong, my cover is fine, Alice. Eve, not knowing the message, can't decrypt it and she's left with an illegible message. So how did Alice encrypt her message? Let's check to see if she did it using a shift cipher. In the first video, it was called a Caesar cipher. Now I'm going to write the encrypted message down here. And I want to check to see if it's a Caesar cipher. So I'm going to shift it 3 to the right. So you can see how A will encrypt to D, where D decrypts back to A. So I'm going to decrypt it, and it's not giving me anything I can read. So let's do another shift. Maybe um, F will go back to A. Let's see what happens and nothing. So I could do this, all 26 of them, including the where these plain text and the cipher text are the same thing, uh, but I'm going to auto decrypt it. So it's going to run through all 26 possibilities and I'm going to read through them and see if any of them make any sense. And it didn't appear that any of them made sense, which means that Alice did not use a Caesar cipher. So how did Alice encrypt her message? She used what we call the keyword cipher. So before talking about it, let's review on how these encryptions work. Let's take out our plain text alphabet and our cipher text alphabet. And if you remember from the last video, A would encrypt to whatever letter would be here, B would encrypt to whatever letters there, C there, D there, and the rest of the alphabet to their corresponding uh, cipher text location. Okay, so we need to know her keyword. Now her keyword ended up being math. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the word math in the first four uh, spots of the ciphertext. So that means A would encrypt to M and B encrypt to A and so on. Now we need to fill in the rest of the ciphertext alphabet, so we're going to use the remaining letters of the alphabet. Now what you'll notice is that we skipped H here, uh, we skipped M, and we skipped T because those were already used in the beginning of the ciphertext alphabet. We remove them from the remaining part of the alphabet. So now A encrypts to M, B encrypts to A, C to T, D to H, and then the rest of the plain text to their corresponding ciphertext. Okay, let's go ahead and encrypt our own message. So let's move the ciphertext alphabet right below the plain text and write out our message in plain text. Need at 10 in the park. So what we're going to do is we need to associate the plain text M with the cipher text. Now if you go up here, you notice that M is going to correspond to K. So we're going to go replace K as the cipher text. Next one is E. Now E is going to encrypt to B, so we'll place B down there. Now E is going to go to B again. And then T, you'll see that T is going to go to S. And then A to M. T to S. T to S, and so on. So I'll let you go ahead and pause the video and finish up the encryption. Okay, so now if you finish this, this is what you're going to end up getting. And in the end, it's going to say something like Kibs Missible Flozebnoth. So good luck reading that. So let's go ahead and decrypt Alice's message. So place the message at the bottom of the screen. Now let's take out our plain text and ciphertext alphabet. Now remember the key word to Alice's cipher was math. So we'll place math in the first four spots of the cipher text alphabet. And then we'll place the remaining letters of the alphabet. So let's go ahead and start with the A and her cipher. Now A will decrypt back to B. N will decrypt back to O. A back to B. 
F goes back to I, and so on. So W to W, M to A, and we can go ahead and finish this off. And we get Bob, I was wrong, my cover is fine, Alice. And there we go. Now what if we did not know Alice's keyword was math? What would we do? So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this here. We have our original alphabet and we have our substitution or our ciphertext alphabet. Now what we were just using was a keyword of math. Uh, don't worry about the key letter, that just tells you where to place math. A meaning starting in the first spot. And we submit our keyword and you can actually see here is our ciphertext alphabet. We take our encrypted message, so decrypt, scroll down, uh, we see we have our message, Bob, I was wrong, my cover's fine. But what if we didn't know it was math? Well, we have a way, we have some ways of doing this. One is going to be in a different video. But here, if you don't know it's math, maybe you know a theme of the keywords. Maybe you know that it has to do with school subjects, and you might want to try science. Uh, now, this is a good place to mention this. You can't use a keyword science with two E's. So I said should not have any repeated letters. So that means either you remove this E and write that, or you keep that E and remove the second one. Either way, you can't have any repeated letters. So we can submit the keyword and come down and decrypt it and see what we get. And notice that we don't get anything. Um, and we can keep doing that. We already know it's math, so everything else we try is not going to work. Now the last thing I wanted to show you about the keyword cipher is the choice for the keyword. Now if I use something like cab, all right, and I submit it, let me scroll up so you can see it, you have your keyword here, cab, and then the rest of the alphabets here. If I try encrypting Alice's message, Bob, I was wrong, my cover's fine, you're actually going to see that most of the plain text was unchanged. Granted, it's still kind of hard to read, but you can get the gist from um, what we have here. And it's because when you use the keyword cab, notice that after D, actually after B here, the ciphertext alphabet and the plaintext alphabet are exactly the same thing, which is why I introduced the key letter. If I change it so that cab doesn't start at A, but starts in the second location at B, okay, which just meant shift it over one unit, if I try decrypting, I'm sorry, encrypting Alice's message now, now it looks nothing like the plain text. And just for those who actually stuck around to the end of the video, there are two key words that I like using. The first is uncopyrightable, because it should, or at least to my knowledge, the longest uh, English word that does not repeat letters. And let's see, the other one I like, just because it has the word thunder, but thunderclap is also a good one. So there you go. Thanks for watching.